Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. A parameter field allows you to specify a value that will be used by the report when the report data is refreshed. Parameters can serve multiple purposes in reports and are one of the most powerful tools that you have. You can use parameters to filter report data at runtime, selecting which records to display and calculate on the fly. You could also have a parameter prompt you to enter a value which can then be used by a formula within the report, for example. You create the parameter fields within the Field Explorer pane just as you create many other types of fields. You do have a few considerations to bear in mind as you create the parameter fields for use in your reports. First off, parameter fields that will be used by report group or record selection formulas do not need to have the parameter field placed into the actual report. Simply create the parameter field and then reference its value as needed within the selection formula. Also, you can create parameters that will accept string, number, currency, boolean, date, time, or date time values for use within the report. To create a parameter field, select the Parameter Fields option within the Field Explorer pane and then click the New button in the toolbar at the top of the pane. This will launch the Create New Parameter dialog box where you can specify the settings for the parameter field. The name and the type are the only two required arguments within this dialog box. You can specify the other values as needed. In the Create New Parameter dialog box, enter the name of the parameter field that you want to create into the Name text box. It can be up to 255 characters in length, but should be short, descriptive, and easy to reference. You can then use the Type drop-down to select the data type of the parameter. In the List of Values area, you can create a list of preset values from which the user can select the desired value to set for the parameter when refreshing the report data. You can select either the Static option or the Dynamic option from the List of Values drop-down. Note that your choice changes what fields are available within the dialog box. If you select the Static option, then you are presenting the user with choices that always contain the same values. This is used for possible parameter choices that do not change very frequently, if at all. If you choose Dynamic, then you create a list of possible parameter choices that can be updated as needed. In addition, you can create cascading choices in the Dynamic Parameter Prompts. Cascading choices allow you to make the user select from multiple fields to specify an exact value. For example, you could use both a city and a state field in a dynamic cascading prompt to prevent confusion about which city is being specifically referred to when one is selected. For example, using a cascading prompt, you could make the user choose Grand Rapids, Michigan versus Grand Rapids, Minnesota. In a static prompt, you would simply see the city of Grand Rapids listed twice without any idea which value was associated with which state. Now, if you select the static option, then you can provide a list of values from a database field from which the user can choose by selecting the name of the desired database field from the value field dropdown. You can use the Description Field drop-down to choose a database field which describes the contents of the value field choice if needed. For example, if you selected the Employee ID field as your value field, you could then select the Employee Name field as the Description field so that the user could see a name versus a number when selecting a parameter value. If you want to manually type a list of values and optionally their descriptions, then you can either click into the first value column row and begin entering the parameter values, or you can click the insert button to append a new entry to an existing list of values. 
In the value list, you can also select any entry made and click the delete button, which looks like a black X, to delete a selected entry. As you add more values to the list, you can click the move up and move down arrow buttons to move the selected choices up or down through the list of values. You can use the Actions drop-down button to perform various commands on the value list that is shown. If you selected to use a database field value, then you must select the Append All Database Values command to load the values from the selected fields into the value list. You can choose the Clear command to remove all list values shown. You can import a delimited list of values from a text file by choosing the Import command choice. This launches a separate dialog box which you can use to browse for and open the delimited text file to use. Also, after typing a list of values, you can choose the export command to export a manually entered list to a delimited text file by using the Save As dialog box. If you choose Dynamic in the List of Values section, then you have different choices to make within the section below it. If you have a cascading parameter choice, meaning it uses multiple fields, then type whatever you would like to have displayed as the prompting text for the cascading parameter into the Prompt Group Text text box. You can use this with single field prompts as well, but the title shows up at the top of the parameter dialog box prompt and not over the individual fields. To create a new list of field values from which the user can select, ensure that the new choice is selected in the Choose a Data Source section. You can then select from the list of fields in the current data source by clicking the Insert button or by simply clicking into the first empty row within the value column. You can select any field entered into the list after choosing one, and then click the Delete button to delete the field. You can also reorganize selected fields by clicking the Move Up and Move Down arrow buttons. If you would like to use a secondary field for the description of the field that was selected in the value column, then you can choose a field for that purpose to the right by clicking into the description column. In the parameter column, you can click on a value to unbind it or bind it to the parameter. Once you have set your value list, then you can set the desired options for each value in the Options area. The choices from which you can select change depending on whether or not you selected static or dynamic value fields. For all static values that are not Boolean or logical values, you can set the following parameter options by clicking into the Setting column and then entering or changing the value. In the Prompt Text option, you can enter the text that you want to appear as the parameter prompt. You can choose True or False from the Prompt with Description Only setting to only allow the description field choices to be viewed in the parameter prompt, which is True, or to show both the value and description fields, which is False. You can enter a default parameter value to use into the default value setting if needed. If you select true in the allow custom value options, then the user can actually type in their own values in addition to selecting from the value list that you provide. If it's set to false, then they must only choose from the values that are shown in the list. If the Allow Multiple Values option is set to True, then the parameter prompt will allow multiple values to be selected. This also enables you to set both the Allow Discrete Values and Allow Range Values options to True as well. Normally, you can only select one of the two options. You can set the Allow Discrete Values options to True 
to allow for only singular parameter values to be selected. Although there can be multiple singular values, this means that there are no ranged parameter values, such as all values from 100 to 1000. You can set the Allow Range Values option to True to allow ranged parameter value choices. You can use the Minimum Length option to enter the minimum number of characters that can appear as a value entry. You can also use the Maximum Length option to enter the maximum number of characters that could appear as a value entry. You can use the Edit Mask option to enter a field mask that restricts the possible range of characters that users could input if desired. Now when you're setting static Boolean parameter options, you can set the Prompt Text, Prompt with Description Only, and Default Value options as normal. You can also enter the Boolean Group Number option to set the number of the group to which you wish to add the selected Boolean value. Boolean groups are created when Crystal Reports requires users to enter a prompt value. Boolean groups can contain many Boolean parameter fields. When a user selects a group of Boolean values, they can set the same values or different values to each parameter in the group. You use the Exclusive Group option to set this behavior. If this option is set to True, users can only select a single True Boolean value from the Boolean options presented within the group. If set to False, then the users can set multiple options in the group to True. Now, if you selected a dynamic set of values, then you can set the Prompt Text, Prompt with Description Only, Allow Multiple Values, allow discrete values, and allow range value options as normal. In addition, you can also set the sort order option to select how to sort the field's data values within the parameter prompt. The value can be sorted in either ascending order or descending order by either the value field or the description field. Once you've set the desired parameter options, click the OK button within the Create New Parameter dialog box to create the new parameter field. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.